Hi everyone and welcome to this new Wavelab video series. My name is Dom and I'm a music producer, mixing and mastering engineer based here in London. And on this video, I'm going to talk about five easy steps on how to make your music sound professional and get it to sound its best for releasing it into the world. So let's take an master song as an example and let's see what we can do to give it some depth, punch, width and loudness using the powerful tools that we have in Wavelab. Step number one analyzing and checking your files. And that's extremely important. Before you even start mastering your track, make sure that there are no problems with your file to begin with. And Wavelab has some extremely useful tools to help you do that. Let me show you a few of them. On the Analyze tab, we have the Global Analysis tool. And that's extremely useful because you just click Analyze, and then it analyzes your file and shows you what are your peaks, your digital peaks, your true peaks. Very important if you're planning to release your music online, your loudness, so basically your LUFS loudness. We'll talk about this in another video. Your DC offsets and any possible errors that you might have. So this can give you a very quick overview of what's going on on your file. Next, of course, we have the waveform view and this can come in quite a few different forms. The first is the typical waveform view. The second one is a spectrogram that can show you the entire frequency spectrum in a very analytical way and you can identify any problems. And we also have the loudness view that allows you to see the loudness distribution for your entire track. The next thing, of course, is metering, and we have some really, really powerful tools in Wavelab when it comes to metering. The first meter is the level meter, and that shows you in real time the peak and average loudness of your track, as well as the relationship between the left and right channels. The next one, and that's a very, very cool one, is the spectrometer. And of course, I can resize all of them very, very easily. And that's a very detailed, very powerful FFT analyzer. So let me give you an example. When I play back this track, I can clearly see the kick drum dancing over here as well as the snare right there. So it's very, very powerful, very fast, very responsive. Now, if you want to see the entire frequency analysis of your track, you can just select it and then go to your analysis and select audio selection. And now all the meters will update and will show you a full analysis of the entire length of your song extremely cool and you can do this in seconds. The next meter I want to talk about is the loudness meter and this is an audio meter for monitoring loudness according to the EBU R128 standard which is extremely important if you're planning to upload your tracks on services like iTunes, Spotify, YouTube and so on and so forth. Another very very cool meter is the wave scope and this basically allows you to preview your waveform after you've done some processing to it. For example, if you add a limiter, if you add an EQ, you can immediately see this updating in real time. So you can actually visualize what's happening to your audio file when you add processing to it. This is a very, very invaluable tool. And the next thing you want to make sure before you start mastering is to perform your fade-ins and fade-outs. For example, in this specific file, when I zoom in, you can see in the beginning, it looks clean. But when I zoom in a little bit more, you see there's a little bit of dirt right there that I can get rid of. So I can very easily go and select this region, clean this up and also perform a fade in right here. So I can go to the process tab, perform a fade in so that my track starts smoothly. And I'm going to do the same towards the end. I'm going to perform a fade out right there. And now we're good to go. Step number two, add corrective and creative EQ. And it's very important that you add your corrective EQ at the very beginning. So if there are any issues with your audio, if you find any offending frequencies, any tonal elements that you don't like, it's a good idea to address them at the very, very beginning. Because when you start adding compression or character EQ, all these things, then all you will do is basically amplify those problems. So you don't want to do that. So in this case, I'm going to use Masteric, which is a mastering suite plugin in Wavelab that has all the processes that you need to master your tracks. And I'm going to add an EQ right there. So let's play back the track. So in general, I'm very happy with the sound. I don't find any offending frequencies right there. But what I can see on my analyzer is that there's quite a little bit of rumble right there up to 34 hertz that I don't need and this will compromise my headroom in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 
a very nice filter on the EQ on WaveLab, and I'm going to cut up to, let's say, 40, 38 hertz, something like this. This is also a 96 dB per octave filter, so it's very, very surgical and detailed. It really cuts everything below that point. So let's see what it does. So now you can see that this low-end rumble is completely cleaned up. So the next step is to add some creative EQing. And when I'm saying creative, I mean, this is completely subjective, right? But what you want to do is basically enhance the important elements of your song. So I'm going to add another module so that I keep things contained. And now I'm going to make some decisions, you know? I think that the low end is pretty okay. I mean, if I want to enhance the kick drum a little bit, I can go right here and maybe find my kick drum right there. And maybe add a little bit of boost. I don't need too much because it's already there. And then what I want to do is I want to go to another band and enhance a little bit of the mids, you know, the vocals, uh, those nice synths right there, the guitars. So let's try and do that. So in general, you want to do broad strokes, wide cues, you know. I don't want to do sharp uh, cues right there. I want to make it nice and broad. And again, not too much, a few dBs. If you find that you need to boost more than three dBs and you can go back to the mixing stage, go back to the mixing stage. If you can't, more than three dBs is fine. Don't worry about it. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and that's something very, very cool that I wanna show you right now, is I want to enhance a little bit of the side signal. And that's where all the stereo information is. And this way you can make your track sound wider. So I'm going to use band four and I'm going to turn it into a mid side band. So that means I can treat the mid signal and the side signal separately. So I'm gonna to go to the side signal and I'm going to enhance those stereo sounds like the synths, the reverbs, the guitars, all those things using this band. Let's check it out. So I want to get this nice low mid from all those different elements. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to add a nice high shelf and give the song a little bit of sparkle. Again, just a little bit of it. Now another very cool module that we have in Masterik is the dynamic EQ. And the difference between the dynamic EQ and the normal EQ is that the dynamic is not a static EQ. It engages itself when your frequencies pass a certain threshold. So let me show you a quick example. Let's say I wanted to enhance this snare over here. And I can clearly see that the snare lives around here on 140 hertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this frequency right here. And now I'm going to exaggerate a little bit so I can show you what it does. I'm going to add quite a bit of gain. Let's make it a little bit more narrow. And now I'm going to set my threshold so that when the snare hits, then the EQ adds a boost. So this will enhance my snare. Let's check it out. Let's bring down the threshold. So without it, So it really adds a lot of punch to the snare. Of course, I don't need this right now, but in case you cannot go back to the mixing stage, this can really help you get some elements out in the mix. Step number three, add compression and punch. And of course, compressors come in many different flavors. You know, you have single band compressors, you have multi-band compressors, you have FET compressors, optical compressors, so many different things. And the secret right here is to figure out what you want to do with your music. Do you want it to sound compressed? Do you want to fix some things? Do you want to make it more even? Let me show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add a module and I'm going to add the compressor module in Master Rig. 
So as you can see, we have four bands. This can be up to four bands and it's a mid-side compressor as well. But if you feel you don't need all four bands, in this case, I don't think that I need all four bands. I can just reduce the number of bands right there. And now I can basically define the frequency crossover point like this. I wanna make sure that the kick and snare are on different frequency ranges right there. And then I can decide what kind of compressor I'm gonna use for each frequency range. So for example, I can select my low end to have a standard compressor, which means a very clean, a very transparent compressor. Tube is more of an optical style compressor. Vintage is an FET compressor, very fast. And of course we have the maximizer as well. So in this case, I'm going to leave it on standard and I'm going to bring up the threshold, open the attack because I don't want to squash the low end too much. I just want to make it a little bit more even to make it a little bit more coherent. And I'm going to have a low ratio, change the release a little bit so that it bounces with the song. And let's listen to it right now. So it basically catches those peaks when the kick drum and the bass play together so that the low end becomes a little bit more homogeneous. Okay, let's try the same thing with the mid and high frequencies. Again, I'm opening the attack because I don't want those snare transits to be eaten away. And as you can see, I'm adding just a little bit of compression. I'm only touching the needle. I don't go and compress this really, really heavily. Now, if you want to add punch to your master, there's one secret plugin that we have in Wavelab that can really help you out if you cannot go back to the mixing stage. And that's the multiband envelope shaper. This allows you to basically enhance your transients depending on the frequency range that you want to choose. For example, let's say I want to enhance the transients of my low end, my mid range, So it's a very, very powerful plugin. It can add this little extra layer of punchiness to your masters. Step number four, add exciteness, wideness, and depth with saturation. And of course, when we talk about saturation, there are so many things that you can consider, but when it comes to mastering, some people are really scared of saturation. But remember, you're the artist, you take these decisions, and if you want to add a little bit of richness to your sound, that's great. Let me show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to add another module and I'm going to add the saturator module right there. So in this case, we have two algorithms. We have tape saturation, tube saturation, and all these bands, as you can see, we have four bands, but I can also change the number of bands again, can be mid-side. So in this case, I'm going to go to my low end and add a little bit of tape saturation right there. Let's see how it sounds. A little bit, not too much. I don't want to introduce distortion to the sound, of course. Now let's go to the mid-range and I'm going to turn it into mid-side and now I'm going to add some tube saturation to the sides. And maybe some tape saturation to the highs. Bring out this nice silky top end. So this not only allows me to add extra harmonics to the sound, but also make it wider. So let's see what we've done up to this point. Without? So I've made this song wider, I've made it more open, the vocal shine now, we have a little bit of richness in the low and the top end, the mids are up front. So just by using the mastering, you can do so many different things. Step number five, add loudness. 
obviously everyone wants to make their songs loud and that's one of the aspects of mastering. So in this case, my suggestion is try and use layers of different limiters and maximizers. In this case, I'm going to add um, another module right here on Master Rig and I'm going to add the limiter right there. So this has quite a few elements, but in this case, I'm going to use the maximizer element right there. I'm going to set the type to modern and I'm going to start adding a little bit of loudness. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a second layer of limiting and I'm going to do this with the Vice Mastering Maximizer from Softube. Because of course Wavelab is an audio editor and it can load third-party plugins, you have lots of options right there. So in this case, I'm going to use this Mastering Maximizer to add a little bit more loudness and let's see what we can do. And as you can see, I don't need to over compress, I don't need to over limit because I'm adding all those things in stages, in layers. Every stage of the process adds a little bit of something like cooking ingredients to a great dish. So let's see what we've done up to this point. So these are five steps that you can use to make your music sound professional and ready for release. Hope you found this video useful. Let us know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next and we'll see you in the next one.